I think for me, I, we had our baby in February and, you know, we have two older kids that are so active in sports and school. We're always traveling and doing things. And although it was exciting, I remember trying to like go to one of our son's games and it was overwhelming. Like it was cold. Like I have this new baby. Like I have to go sit in the car and take care of him. And it just was a lot to deal with. And this was right before the pandemic. And I remember like, oh, this is my life now. But then the kind of like COVID hit and everything was shutting down. And all of a sudden I was by myself at home. Like he went back to work. The kids were in school. Like it was a lot to take the baby out. And so like I was starting to feel like lonely and sad. And then I couldn't wait for one of the kids to come home or and then sports practices. So they didn't come home till late. But I remember the week before spring break, the governor announced everything was shutting down. Like everything was being quarantined. And I was so happy. Like I was like so happy. Everybody had to stay home. Like I wasn't home alone. And it, it was just, it was, I loved it. Like I really loved it. And, but after a while, everything started to feel unsure. Like what's gonna happen next? Like what are we doing? But it was like, nice to be home with my family but then you know when you're used to having family dinners like we couldn't go introduce our baby to people we were really protective like everything and everybody seemed really scary um so there was like that that stress but then that loneliness and like the missing of family and sports and I kind of felt like it was it was harder just being unsure of everything during kind of like the beginning mid with our baby. Um, I, I don't remember all that. Um, like she was saying, the our baby came just when COVID was over in China and France, and we were unsure. But uh, hearing about what parents are going through during the pandemic where the, a parent or family isn't able to come in to the hospital to meet and greet the baby, we fortunately got that opportunity and her family showed up and we had the little cradle ceremony where we put the baby in and the grandma sang. So that was great. And a few weeks after that, when we got out and home, she was taking care of the baby. I got to stay for about two weeks, a little bit more, and then I had to go back to work. But then the pandemic started hitting hard, things start closing. And for me, being at home, having the opportunity to hang out with him even longer, um, we, we created a great bond. And so not everything was bad for me. It was a blessing to, to be at home and to be participating in his life in his early years and having the other kids there to meet and greet him, hang out with him. That's been great. The downfall to more current things is that we we had his first birthday, and that was a, a headache for us to think about how we're going to have that birthday, who we're going to invite, and where we're going to have it, because longhouses are closed, the, a lot of the buildings on the reservation are closed, so it was stressful there. And then anytime you come together, you know, what what little people do come, there's always that fear, like, oh, we got to stay home now, we have to can't go into the public we can't you know you know somebody else's birthday could happen or some other celebration or even a funeral then you feel sad you feel nervous about going to participate in other things right after you attend an event i was starting to i'm very extroverted like i love people i love you know, helping and as my job is to like help the community as a case manager. So I've had people reach out to my Facebook, like, do you know where we can find this? Or do you know who can do this? And like everything was like shut down. And so I would like come in to help when I could. And so, but I was kind of excited. I was like, oh yes, I'm going to work. You stay home. <laughs> I'll be back tomorrow, no. But it was just exciting to kind of go back and be helpful and be around people and be working. And it was, and with everything shut down, I didn't have to be at work. Like I wasn't being called in. I could have said no, I could have not went, but I like my job, I like helping. And so it was nice to not have to be like, okay, your maternity leave is over, now you're back to work full time. 
I was fortunate to kind of transition as I wanted to. I was able to like go in for an hour here, two hours there just to help and then go back home. And I think that was like the blessing for me with a new baby during this COVID is I wasn't, I didn't have to come back right away. I was able to transition slowly and I didn't like dread it. It was something I looked forward to because I enjoy what I do. So I was able to like get away from being a mom for a little bit and just kind of have some interaction um, with, with the community during my job. And so like even now, like I am fortunate to have a supervisor that is supportive where, you know, with ECE shutting down or, you know, having a flexible schedule, like how, how do you want to work, Lorian? How do you want to do things? And I am so thankful for that because I've learned to use Zoom. I've learned um, how to help people use Zoom or communicate more with emails, um, occasionally social media so that we can, I can still be helpful. And I was able to kind of do that on my own terms. And that, that this worked out for me. I feel like the pandemic worked out for me. And sometimes it didn't feel like it, but when I look back, it did. Like, I am thankful I had my baby last year. Um, for me, I've had the opposite experience. Because <laughs> I, I work with the community and with students, so virtually it has started out great, but then just our technology here in Warm Springs is, is not that great. So connecting with students and their families was a little bit more of a struggle. My employer in, um, created opportunity for flex scheduling and all that great stuff, but still yet there's, uh, there's, there's a gap between uh, us connecting with students and the families. And we're working through it, um, and the, the hard part is, is as we we're planning, getting ready to engage with students and their families, a lot of other programs were kicking out everything, and um, that's all great, but then it gets to a point where even our kids don't want to participate in any of the virtual um, events that are going on. And so when I start really getting a move, move there, it was hard to get students to get on and get families to engage with us. And so there's a little bit of a gap this year. So we're planning on coming back around to reconnect with some of these students. Some of them, 12th graders, will be at college working or military next year or just hanging out in the community. So uh, I want to make it make that an effort to connect back with them and support them however I can. And that's the great thing about our, our program is that we, we can do that. Uh, for the younger kids, um, it's going to be kind of a hard one, depending on if the schools are open, because they already don't want to do virtual engagement, so we're going to have to figure out alternate ways and unique ways to connect with them. I think that was one of our struggles during to the pandemic, was I was doing a lot of face-to-face -face still with clients, but that's something I wanted to do. It's not something I had to do, and I took it as, well, I'm still getting paid. I might as well still help. Um, but when we were both on Zooms, we live in Sixiqua, that became like an, like an argument because our, our t um, internet couldn't handle like the kids and both of us doing things. We don't have good cell service and him, like he, they would be, like I would be doing something and he, he would be like, oh, I have a meeting. And then the, like the, the baby, like I'd be like, you take the baby. And he'd be like, I'm on a meeting. <laughs> And I go, so am I. And I always kind of, we still argue about it because he, he breastfeeds. And so it seemed like every Zoom that I'm on, I, I'm nursing a baby or um, trying, to, trying to talk and um, comfort him. And I, 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 we would kind of argue. And I'd be like, everything is kind of based around you and your job. Like, I hate your job. And um, you don't even make a difference, and that kind of that kind of arguments were so real, and it, I, I think it was because we were spending so much time together, where it was hard trying to like keep our older kids happy, you know, because they're so used to sports and traveling, and they're becoming young little adults. They're changing. We're both trying to work, and you know, it, it just seemed like we weren't even a couple no more. We were like these coworkers that were parenting these kids and. I'm like, ah, oh, you know, it did become frustrating a lot. And 
And, and him, he yesterday he was just telling somebody like, "Oh yeah, our baby sleeps great through the night." I'm like, "No, he doesn't. Um, you sleep great through the night." But I think this pandemic, it was it was really really hard to juggle our work that we both are passionate about and being parents that you know to, to teen, active teenagers and a, and a new baby. It was such a huge transition at one time, and I think I did all the work and it was hard. They, I could take this one. No, you cannot <laughs> take this one. They, so they were straight A students at the, in school. They're straight A students. They're all year round. They're active. They're doing something extracurricular activities. When everything kind of like shut down, um, and we moved on to like I can't remember what it was called. They moved on to something. Um, what was that Distance website? Distance learning. Yeah, the, but there was a website. Okay. Any. No. Anyways, they did something, and that's when we kind of realized like where their weaknesses were in school. And I've all I've been pretty loud with our school. Like we're not they're not getting tutoring. They don't get electives, you know. And I'm always um, kind of bringing those things up. And when they stayed home, I just seen it even more. Like I have a sixth grader. No, he was a fifth grader and a and a seventh grader, and. Our girl, who, who's a straight-A student and everything, her brother was smarter, her fifth-grade brother was smarter at her in math. Like, she was really struggling. And we, it, just, it just kind of like, you don't know this. You, what are, you know, you don't understand this. And, like, he was sitting down, like, she doesn't know the basics and, like, what's going on. And it just kind of, it just added to things that, the issues I've already been bringing up. Like what are why are you getting A's when you're you're what are they teaching you like what are what what are you learning in school and so that the, that I felt like was almost kind of a blessing in disguise too because we were able to kind of see what they knew and didn't know and then when Casa came around and you know with the new baby we were scared it, even when the option came to send them back to school we have grandmas were always visiting and help take care of and a baby we didn't want to send them back and so we we opted for casa and the first term i think our girl who was a straight a she barely passed she, her math she's taking a freshman math class and she's an eighth grader she pa barely passed with a d i think our boy failed every class um and I think we were just so used to them being independent. Like we're just so used to them like wanting good grades and working toward things and on their own that we pretty much trusted them. Like, oh, well, you got it. You know what you're doing. And just trying to juggle going back to work in the baby. Like we were just like, okay, do what you want. Just as long as you do your work. I had the first vaccination on the 19th. Um, I got a little bit sore, a little bit tired, or my arm got sore and a little bit tired. But um, other than that, it's, it was just like a flu shot. I didn't experience a whole lot of negative side effects. I did not. I, I am still breastfeeding, and I just don't feel comfortable. Like, I just don't feel comfortable getting it while I'm still nursing. Um, I, if I wasn't, I would, but I, I just... I just don't. I usually don't even get, I don't even get the flu shot. It's not that I'm anti-vaccination. It's just because I'm healthy. I drink water and take lots of vitamins. <laughs> no, but I just don't feel comfortable with it while I'm nursing. So I will get it when I'm no longer nursing. Mm -hmm. 